Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 177. I'm here at uh, Hustler Casino. Um, but this vlog is from the Red Rock in Las Vegas. There are some huge hands right away. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. It's a very late night at Red Rock. I wasn't planning on filming, but there's a 2-5 game that turned into an uncapped 5-10. So I've got the camera out. I'm looking forward to playing a higher stakes game at this property and sharing it with you guys. Once my name gets called, I buy in for 2,000. You can see as I make my way to the table that I have a fresh Corona waiting for me. There's an interesting story behind this. My buddy Jake ordered a beer for me while I was waiting. I received it, tipped the cocktail waitress $5, then a player at the table looked at the beer confused and asked to see it. I handed it to him. The look of confusion immediately vanished from his face as he started drinking my beer, said thank you, and kept it for himself. It was pretty funny, but he also didn't order another one or even pay me back my tip amount. Another player at the table ordered this new beer and pre-tipped the cocktail waitress for me, which is really nice of him. It's an interesting start to the session, and I'm already in revenge range mode. You never steal another man's beer without experiencing some consequences. I lose 50 in the first hand of the session, then I pick up pocket jiggities in the small blind the second hand that I'm dealt. A player in middle position limps in, I raise a 75. The beer thief calls in the big blind, he's a certified wild player. The middle position player also calls. I'm getting the sense that some of you are distracted and not paying attention to the poker at all. But anyway, we're going three ways to the flop, out of position. It comes jiggity eight deuce rainbow. We've got the absolute nuts. And I want to send people to pain town. The best way to do that is to try and induce a bluff at this point. I check. Unfortunately, the big blind doesn't bite. He checks. The middle position player is going to try and take this down with a bet of 100. It's not going to work. I call, hoping that the player behind me will either call or raise. Instead, he folds, it's down to heads up with a player who has never stolen a beer from me. The turn is the seven of clubs. The most likely draw makes it straight. I'm not all that worried about it though. What I'm more concerned about is that if I check, the player may check back. I can't have that happen. I lead for 200. The middle position player calls and has around 700 left in his stack. The river is the four of spades. That one's a brick. Before I have a chance to act, the middle position player has forgotten the rules of poker and bets 125 out of turn. Hold on, I didn't do anything. I've got some new info to work with. It seems that the opponent probably doesn't have much of a hand if he only wants to put 125 in the pot on the river. I have all of it, so it's hard for him to have much anyway. I'm not sure if the guy can call a check raise. I bet 400. I really have no clue as to the type of hand that I'll be up against given how this has been played, but maybe he has something like ace-8, or perhaps the player has the case jack. He calls surprisingly quickly. I turn over top set. Fun fact about a set of jacks is that It'll never be the best possible hand on the river unless you improve the quads or a straight flush. In this instance, 10-9 and 6-5 both have a speed. That's not what we're up against though. Right away, we take down a sizable pot. We're already winning 800. Less than 10 minutes later, we're back in the action with pocket tens under the gun. I open to 30. Five players call and are out to get me. Six of us are seeing the flop. It's queen 10-9 with two diamonds. We flop a set again, but this is a dangerous board and we have a lot of opponents. The small blind checks. I could go for either a check raise or a bet since I'm the preflop aggressor. I bet 125 for value. The middle position player folds. The hijack raises to 300. This looks incredibly strong since I bet with five opponents. She still has four players that'll be acting after her raise. I block her to two pair hands. This just seems like a straight all day. The cutoff button and small blind fold. I don't see much reason for re-raising since there's a good chance that I'm currently losing. Even if somehow the opponent is doing this with a big combo draw, she'll have a lot of outs. I call for 175 more, it's down to heads up, the turn is another queen, we make a boat, I check, the opponent doesn't like this card, she checks back, the river is the six of spades, I'm going for value, I bet. 800? Call. I actually think that I could have bet two times a pot or even shoved for around three times a pot to target straights, I just didn't want the opponent to fold. She calls before my chips are in the middle, I show my boat, she shows that she outflopped us with the straight and we got her on the turn. She almost definitely would have called a larger bet given the fact that she snap called the 800. Still, it's another nice pot for us. Right away, we're up 2,000 in less than two orbits. I've been mentioning this a lot lately that I'm currently running close to the best that I've ever run over the course of the last few months. I put out vlogs of a lot of winning sessions. At some point, things are going to turn around and I'll be happy to show the losing sessions, but for now, I'm enjoying the upswing. I'm also enjoying the table that I'm at. The game is fantastic. My buddy Jake jams here and makes a pyramid structure while he waits for his opponent to make a decision. Eventually, the player would fold, and Jake shows a queen, which is good for at least top pair. Next, I've got king five suited in the big blind. There's a straddle on. The button min raises to 40. I call for 30 more. 
Under the gun coals, we're going three ways to the flop. It's jack six, four, rainbow. We don't have much except one over and some backdoor draws. I check, under the gun checks, the button bet's 80. I can theoretically have a lot of strong hands on this board, including sets and two pair combos. I put in the check raise to 300. If I get called, there are plenty of turn cards that'll help me improve, including a king, any diamond, any deuce, three, seven, or eight. Don't worry though, I'm not gonna get called. The under the gun player folds and the button jams it in my face for way too many dollars. I get caught trying to make a move like Jagger. It doesn't work out, and it wasn't a great idea to begin with since I was sandwiched between two players. Nick Petrangelo says it would have been fine if the under the gun player wasn't behind me. Given that he was, I should have just folded to the flop bet. In this one, I'm dealt a6 suited in the hijack. I opened to 30. My buddy Jake calls in the cutoff. Small blind calls. I imagine the small blind's favorite movie is The Town, but he'd probably like it better if instead of it being about bank robberies, it was about robbing people with beer. The dealer puts out 875 with two spades. We have a monster combo draw. The small blind checks. I bet 55 is a semi bluff. The cutoff calls. The small blind isn't interested. He folds. It's heads up. The turn is the deuce of hearts. Not helpful. I slow down and check. My buddy bets 165. I'm hanging in there with a the call. With the way things have been going lately, I'm obviously going to improve on the river. Just not the way that I'd like. The dealer puts out the six of diamonds. We brick the draws, but make a pair. They're four to the straight on the board. We don't have a ton of showdown value. I check. The cutoff checks back. I turn over my hand. There's some small chance that it's good. It isn't. My friend has pocket kings. He just flighted my raise preflop to set the trap for the small blind, who on the previous hand raised to $2,000 from the big blind after the small blind limped in. When the small blind folded in that hand, the big blind showed that he made his move with complete trash. I'm only up 1,000 when I pick up king eight suited on the gun plus one. I open to 35. Jake calls on my left. The wild player calls in the cutoff. It's the same opponents as the last hand. The flop comes king seven deuce rainbow. We have top pair, but not much of a kicker. I check for pot control. Middle position player bets 35. The cutoff might have a piece. He calls. I'm not going anywhere after underwrapping my hand initially. I call. The turn is the four of hearts. We all check, so I probably have the best hand. The river is another seven, and backdoor hearts gets there. The other players could have me beat in a variety of ways. I check. The middle position player checks. Cutoff bets 80. There's too small of a bet for me to fold, so I call. The player on my left folds. The cutoff shows that he got there with eight seven offsuit. He was drawing slim to two outs. He hits one on the river, then takes me to value town. After a great start, our stack isn't going in the right direction. I'd like to go back in the right direction, and I'd like to head that way quickly. There's nothing that'll get us there quicker than rockets. NASA has approved me to use two from the small blind. The hijack raises to 30. That's not going to be the price for long. I three bet to 115. The player across from me wants to get rid of his green chips, so he makes a fair trade for my 100. The hijack calls with all red chips. We're going heads up out of position. The flop comes queen 10 6 with two hearts. We've got the ace of hearts, making it a lot less likely that we'll be up against a flush draw. I bet 75. The hijack calls with all red chips again. The turn is the deuce of clubs. I'm going to charge my opponent more this time if he wants to stick around. I bet 300. That's more than he'd like to spend to see the river. He folds. It's been quite a while since I've won a sizable pot. Feels good to rake this one in, even though it's not that huge. Later, I pick up King Town of Hearts in the small blind. Under the gun plus one opens a 75. That's a large raise. My hand is too good to let it go, though, and this might be the last opportunity for me to properly get revenge on this particular opponent for his pregame thievery. I call. We're heads up. The flop is 6 4 4 rainbow. We only have two overs and a backdoor flush draw. I check. Under the gun plus one, bet 75 again. I don't think that'll have much, and I know that his perception of me is that I'm a tighter player, so I might be able to potentially get away with a sneaky bluff down the line. I call one time. The turn is the seven of clubs. We don't improve. I check with plans of giving up if we face a bet. The opponent checks back, and perhaps he's afraid of something. The river is the jack of spades. I have very little showdown value, and I'm up against someone who played passively on the previous street. I fire for 300 with complete air. The opponent isn't happy about it. He takes one last look at his cards, and then he eventually flicks him into the muck. That's the last interesting hand that we'd play before half the table would head out. It's about 4 a.m., so I don't blame him. Time to book a win and rack up. Interesting night, 
turned into a 5-10 game right before I got there. Wasn't really planning on necessarily playing today at all. And then uh, kind of woke up in the middle of the night and definitely wasn't planning on filming, but once it turned into a 5-10 game right before I sat down, thought it would be fun. So got in and the game got wild. I was up 2K in the first like 15 or 20 minutes after flopping two sets. And I apparently used up all the run good uh, stack, just dwindled from there. Um, ended up winning, yeah, 980 over three hours. So happy with that. And then uh, now it's time to eat with my buddy. It's 4 a.m. After eating, just gonna go and get some sleep. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'm happy to get back to you. This was a really fun session for me to play. Uh, the table was great at the Red Rock and um, I actually played the next five days in a row. So I came in and played 510 the day after and I won like $650. The day after that, I lost 1150 and 25. And then I won like 500 the day after that, and 100 the next day. And then I went to Bellagio, I played a 10, 20, 40 session, and I had the biggest win of my entire life by double. So super excited to share that with you. That's the only other session that I filmed. Um, I've been playing a lot more and really been enjoying it. So uh, be on the lookout for that vlog, because that's, that's gonna be the next one that comes out. And then I lost. $28 they got me at the 1-2 game in the Golden Nuggets. So the bigger games I'm playing, I'm definitely going to make videos of. And every meetup game, I'm going to make videos of. But um, some of these other sessions aren't going to be filmed uh, like any any of the sessions that I played between this vlog and the 10-20 session. Next next video, though, I am going to go over my stats for the year. So uh, that'll, that'll be at the end of next video. All right, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Stay safe. Good luck at the tables. And I'll see you next time.